In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we're going to look at how to flip a card on the screen where as it turns over the back side looks like it's the picture of a person. I saw this technique in a political ad recently and asked myself how did they do that? And so in this tutorial and this, the one that follows, I'd like to show you some techniques of making this work. But before we do, let me show you an example of a finished product. I'm going to start with four different images. I have a playing card graphic and then I have three portraits. Now each of them is cropped to the same dimensions because you want them the same size. I'll start out by deciding whether I want it to flip to the face or from the face. Let's start out with the playing card and then we'll put the picture of the individual right behind it. And then what I've done is I've taken my grid lines and I've placed them on the screen. I'm using a 10 by 10 in this case. And if you need to do that, you right click and click on grid lines and off the screen you'll see the options. I picked a 10 by 10. Now I'm going to take a transition. So I go to my transition room on the left. It's my F8 key. I'm going to click on the spin subcategory and choose spin horizontal. Now I'll take that and put that right in the middle. And so now when I play this, I get a nice effect. It flips over and you see the person's picture on the back. Now that's really nice, but there are a couple problems. One problem is I want more than one card to flip. And the other is I want some to flip at the side rather than at the center. But let me show you what happens. Let's go back and move each of these. Let's take this card and move it over to the left just a little bit and we'll we'll right click and we'll click on copy keyframe attributes. We'll right click on the girl's face and do paste and I'll say OK and now the, the one is on top of the other. But watch what happens when we go to movie mode and we try to flip right here. it's not the same effect. Why? Well, what I've discovered is when you use this spin horizontal, it spins over a, an axis that is vertical right in the middle of the screen only. And so when the images are not in the center, you won't get the same effect. So what I'm going to do is back up here a little bit and let's try something else. First of all, I want the cards to be smaller. So I'm going to take my playing card and I'll make it a bit smaller. We'll drag it down below the first line and fill up to the uh, second from the bottom line. Then I have to make sure it's centered on the screen in order for it to spin exactly on that axis that I want to use. So I'm using the arrow keys to put it right in the center. Now I have it smaller and it's looking good. We're going to right click on it and do copy keyframe. We'll right click on the gal and we'll do paste attributes. I'll click on OK. And now I'm back to where I was except I have a smaller smaller card on the screen. Let's try that and we flip it and that looks good. Now what I need to do in order to do this again is I need to take the other images. We'll make this smaller and I'm going to use the playing card two more times. And we'll use the same keyframe attributes, right click and copy. We'll do right click and we'll paste over here. I'm saying yes. And we'll paste over here. Yes. We'll paste on the third one. OK, and we'll paste on the last one. 
OK. Then we're going to take the same transition and drop it in in the second pair and in the third pair. And now I can go through each of them and I play and it flips over and reveals her and then later on it will flip over on the third card that I have and it will show the gentleman and the third one when it flips over. Okay, so each of them is exactly the way I want. Now the next thing I have to do is figure out how can I put them on the screen in three different locations. So what I'm going to have to do is take two of the three, or all three if I want, and make a separate movie out of them because I can't move them simply to a different track in my project and make it work that way. So let's take the first one that we have here and we'll highlight it. I'll right click on it and choose Produce Range, which is a little bit off the screen here. And I simply give it a name and I'll save that as my first range. Now I have one called Card 1. I'm going to repeat that process with Card 2 and Card 3 and then we'll resume the tutorial. Now if I play any of them, I have card 1, we'll hit the preview on the card 1. It shows the first one spinning around in the center. And I could do the same with card 2 or card 3. The next step is I need to position all of them together on the screen. That will be our next tutorial.